Yo, yo, what is good? You're here, Cinema Studies class, Cine 230 Remix Cultures, the real Dr. Dre in the vicinity. We're in the barn doing the thing. It's been kind of drizzly and rainy out, which is so dope. To clean the pollen out of the air. I can breathe today, which is a, a miracle. It's a big week for me here. I uh, put a bunch of storm drain in to my downspouts at the house, which there was none. So it was really rad today to see all this water moving away from my house. That's some old man shit that will get you excited when you're 40 years old, I guess. Um, but anyways, today is the day where if you have not been bored in this class, this may be that day for you. <laughs> if you have been bored in this class, just you wait, because we're going to talk about patent. Now listen, patent may be actually incredibly exciting to you. It may be something that actually is very important to you. So I don't want to uh, belittle it and demean it and talk it down, because um, it's very important. It's just something that I am not as super interested in, but man, it is essential. As we will see, it is... Uh, probably the most important form of intellectual property uh, that that exists because it governs drugs, it governs food, it governs technology. Uh, up until you know, eight years ago, it governed um, genetics and DNA. <clears throat> uh, but it, yeah, I mean, all of almost everything that's made in, in the world is software based. Almost every technology that we use has software in it and all that is patentable subject matter. Um, but literally the food that we eat is patentable. So yeah, so we'll talk uh, about patent today and you may be bored as hell. Um, you may have already been bored as hell. Uh, but we're going to try to do the thing. Uh, hopefully you checked out some of the, 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 the articles, the Wired article, uh, the, the podcast, which if you didn't get to check out the podcast, just download it. Maybe, maybe while you're uh, out for a jog, if you're, if you're venturing out of the crib uh, or out for a walk, you know, you can check it. You can check this American Life podcast on uh, the patent and, and patent problems when it comes to software because it is a little bit of a, of a problem. So patent basically covers ideas as applied to inventions. So, you know, you have an idea um, and it does something. The idea does something and it does something in a new and inventive way that wouldn't be obvious to um, someone which is, we'll talk about, um, then you can file for a patent. So you have an idea, bling, light bulb goes off, you draw it, and you submit it to the United States Patent and Trademark Office, and boop, you have a little patent file, and then you have a patent. And as we'll learn, the patent basically does not allow you to actually execute your idea in a sellable product. It only allows you to uh, prevent others from executing the idea in a, in a patentable, patentable, project, uh, patentable technology. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. But I want to ask you, what do you think this is? And you hear that creaking? That is a tree that is hanging over my barn that's going to get its ass chainsawed down pretty soon here. But it's, it's a little bit of a weird, uh, a weird saw down for me. Um, but anyways... Maybe when I do it, I'll include a video of me going nuts with the, the saw. Anyways, but what is this? <clears throat> now, you're probably saying, oh, it looks like a mailbox. Um, it looks like an oven, or it looks like a safe, or whatever. This is actually what's called a Franklin stove. A Franklin stove is what we call a wood stove. And this is one of, uh, you know, this is a drawing for a, a Franklin stove. Now, that name comes from someone you probably recognize, Benjamin Franklin, who was an inventor. He was a, a capitalist in early America. He was an author. Uh, he was a pirate, um, not necessarily sailing the seas and looting and stealing booty, but he was, uh, you know, he ran the largest printing presses in the United States of America that pirated works 
from uh, European authors, and it made him very wealthy. Anyways, uh, one of the things that he invented was the Franklin stove, which was basically, imagine being in Philadelphia in the 1700s, it's cold as hell. At the time, there were not technologies necessarily that allowed you to heat a house. If you know what a fireplace does, it heats a vicinity, right? It heats, it heats a vicinity in, in a home, but it actually isn't, um, you know, technologically able to spread the heat throughout the domicile. Uh, so it's inefficient. He figured out a way to have an efficient wood-burning stove that he called the Franklin stove. Now, at the time, this, this type of idea would be totally 100% patentable. Instead, Benjamin Franklin uh, decided to release it for free because he thought, you know, hmm, people should have heat. That would be a good thing. Now, he capitalized in many, many other ways um, off of this and, and other technologies that he invented. But, you know, that idea of let's make something that makes society better, that, you know, hey, here's something that I could prevent others from executing in a product. Here's something that's patentable. I'm going to just give it to y'all. Um, how nice. That shit don't happen no more. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that, that's what the Franklin stove is. But that idea is really important because you have these two conflicting ideas when it comes to inventions and when it comes to intellectual properties in general. The idea of singular authorship and ownership, that is, I invented this, I'm going to own it, you have to pay me for access to it, which is the clearance culture, the copyright, capital uh, letters for right, um, and then you have the, the free culture or the copy left, um, which, or the open source or whatever you want, which is let's make stuff that makes society better and then figure out profit um, in the end and more innovations that in art and technologies that are accessible to people will make for a more healthy dem democratic uh, society that people get to partake in and that's just a better world for everybody uh, let's all hold hands in a drum circle type shit but really that's kind of the the idea here okay so we know that uh, you can you you can fairly easily with very little investment financially have a copyright in fact you have a copyright from the moment you fix an idea in a tangible medium that's semi-original and semi-creative. Congratulations. Now, if you want to spend $45, you can register that with the copyright office, and then you can sue people for statutory damages. Maybe worth it if you have something that you think people will, will take and infringe upon so you can get that, that money um, probably in a settlement. Trademark. Again, Come up with a name that's very distinct and use it to brand your product or goods or services in a marketplace. Put a TM next to it. You have a pretty powerful trademark on something that lasts forever. If you want to have a, a national monopoly on it that's a federally registered trademark, you can spend a few hundred dollars to establish that and then pay you know, a few hundred dollars every 10 years to maintain that, but you don't actually need to do that. You can, you can just use it, and that's pretty strong. So you don't have to be very wealthy um, to, get a pat uh, to get a trademark or a copyright, but to get a patent, this is not so easy. They are very expensive, because uh, you need a lawyer, um, you need you need, and the lawyer is going to probably cost the most amount of money to get a lawyer to drop what's called your patent file wrapper, uh, which is what's submitted to the United States Patent and Trademark Office. There's a fee associated with that as well. And then if you do happen to even get the patent, which most pat many patents are actually denied, then you have to figure out how to monetize that. You have to figure out, you know, how can you make money off of this patented idea? Can you execute it in a product without infringing on other people's patents? Or if you want to execute it in a product, will it infringe on other people's patents and you have to figure out a cross-licensing agreement or a licensing pool or something so that you can execute your product? Beyond that, uh, do you have access to manufacturing, to mass manufacturing, to distribution? Do you have connections to retail? So that brings up the element of most independent inventors often will sell 
their ideas or their patents to large uh, corporations. If you watch the Shark Tank, you kind of see, you know, again, how that kind of uh, manifests in the real, real, uh, the real world. So patenting is the product of the upper class. You have to have you have to have money and the history of patents and inventions are largely the history of you know independent inventors showing ideas to people like Thomas Edison who then take their ideas and patent them or uh, you know who buy their ideas and execute them and patent them and get credited as as inventor of those things. 